This plant is called Colt's Foot. It's rather unique. The flower springs up before the leaves. Normally a plant will grow from its leaves, then the stem, and then the flower. This is totally opposite. And it's one of the first flowers that will spring up within this area. And I heard where they've made cough medicines and uh, used it for lung ailments and so on. Although, I've never really worked with this plant, but I want to introduce to you Michael Douglas. He is an expert on wild edibles, and he's also the founder of the Maine Primitive Skills School. So I'm going to cut him in right here and let him talk to you about Colt's Foot. Hi, this is Mike from the Maine Primitive Skills School. We're going to be doing a collaboration with Wayne from Colt Craven Bushcraft on Colt's Foot today. Today we're foraging for Colt's Foot. Um, we're specifically searching for Colt's Foot flowers. Uh, Colt's Foot flowers come up typically um, between April and May. So Colt's Foot is uh, useful for many things. It's a good expectorant as well as a cough suppressant. Um, so this morning we are searching for flowers and these flowers are going to be processed into um, honey lozenges for, uh, for soothing the throat. Colt's Foot flower is um, pretty unique in a lot of ways, um, but to the untrained eye it can definitely be mistaken for a dandelion flower. Alright, so our cold foot flower, if you look right at the flower, it's, uh, it's a nice bright yellow. It's got two distinct areas of the flower. First one being it's got um, kind of a nice band of outer petals here, and then there's a distinct line or a band where the inner petals start. And they're nice gold and yellow. Now, if you look down at the stalk here, it um, cold foot grows in a very, um, very kind of meaty, fleshy stalk. Um, with these kind of reddish bracts that grow all the way up along the, um, the length of the stalk. Um, whereas dandelion flowers have a very smooth stalk. Um, also, you'll notice here on this colt's foot flower um, that there are no leaves present. And now this is, um, colt's foot is known as the sun before the father because the flowers emerge and die back before the leaves come up for the season. So Colt's foot is a member of the Aster family, um, so something to keep in mind with all, um, with most members of the Aster family is that um, they do contain phytochemicals that um, can cause contact dermatitis for, uh, for people with sensitivities to that. Um, so just keep that in mind as you're handling Colt's foot. We like to har harvest no more than one third. Um, and that's uh, one third for us as humans, and one third for the animals, um, the animals and the critters, and then one third for the plant and the Mother Earth itself. We want to harvest um, not all from the same plant or from directly from the same area as well. Um, so if I harvest maybe one here, I want to leave now another one on that plant and harvest perhaps over here, over here, and then down along the trail. So um, Colt's foot. Um, likes to grow in disturbed areas. It's a non-native species from Europe um, and it grows in sandy or rocky areas um, along roadsides, perhaps along trail sides, in culverts we see it a lot, um, or like this logging tote road here. Um, so be mindful as you harvest as to what kind of pollution there is in the area. Um, so I would feel much more comfortable harvesting and using this plant for food and medicine as it's growing in a, a wooded area that doesn't see a lot of traffic. Um, so I'm going to snip this right down at the base of the, of the plant and um, give you a little bit of a better look too at, at the plant species that we're harvesting. So it has underneath it's kind of those, those reddish bracts you see all along the stem as well as around the base of the flower head. Um, and then on the flower head we've got, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have the outer band of petals which are very, very long and flat. 
um, and then we have a distinct ring and then the inner band of petals which grow kind of in an upward fashion. Um, so this is our colt's foot. Harvested colt's foot flowers here and we're going to chop these up and we're going to make them into a really strong tea um, and we're going to blend some rose hips in there and also some mullein leaf from uh, last year's harvest and we're going to make a really strong tea and then we're going to candy these into lozenges. So we're going to be using honey and water and then herbs. And then we're going to pour boiling water on this um, and we're using um, a recipe of one um, one cup of water to one and a half cups of honey, I believe, and um, and we're gonna then blend it together and make some candy blossoms. There, I'm gonna steep this for about 20 minutes in the boiling water with a lid and uh, cozy around it. Smells lovely. So we've got one cup of water here that we're going to add to our herbs. We might need to add a little bit more water. Um, but we don't want to add too much water because we don't want to dilute it. Alright, so then we're going to put a lid on our jar. And we're going to slip it into, slip it into a cozy. It's sit there for about 20 minutes. Build our decoction honey mixture down. Uh, it took a l quite a while longer than half an hour. Um, I think we were a little concerned about letting it burn so we had it a little lower. Um, what you need to do is just keep an eye on it, stir it occasionally, and as you find that it's thickening up or and or creating a, a real foam, foamy bubbly stuff on top, um, there's a good chance you're done. But you can test this by taking a cup of cold water and putting uh, a teaspoon of your candied mixture into the, the ice water and it should harden up straight away. Um, if not, just keep it uh, simmering for a little longer. So what we've done is we've taken our mixture and we've now poured it into a Pyrex dish to cool. Um, and we don't have candy molds, so we're going to be working this by hand once it's at a reasonable temperature. And then we're going to kind of, um, before we store it, we're going to be coating it in a, a light coating of an herbal um, powder to keep it from sticking together. Um, we are taking our chilled lozenge mix and it's right about at this temperature where it's kind of taffy-like, um, as you can see in the, the um, <laughs> as you can see here in the dish, it's stringy and sticky, um, and there's a, a brief moment in time where it gets just cool enough that you can work it in your hands into a, a ball or um, oval or whatever shape you want it to be. Um, beware if it's too warm it sticks to the palm of your hand like Chad and Ritz here and I have been um, experiencing but it's a uh, it's fun part of the process and I recommend that you have a few friends to help the leaves are the safest to use in quantity because they contain the least amount of the pyrolizidine alkaloids the presence of pyrolizidine alkaloids means that while this plant is fine for an occasional tea, salad, or trailside nibble, it should not be eaten in large quantities over long periods of time. That. We use Colesfoot for asthma, sore throats, and coughs.